a lot of times on this job, you'll see people at like the very worst points of their life. Uh, I was arrested for uh, selling cocaine. Get involved in the gangs and selling drugs and I end up getting 40 years in the federal penitentiary. A few years ago, when like the big opiate thing hit, we were going to a bunch of overdoses. I mean, it was, it was pretty crazy. All this time I'm thinking like, this is the way of life, you know? I've been places where the average man wouldn't even think about trying to go. A mom found her son um, dead in bed. We, I remember walking into the house and he was in, it was, he was in a basement. He looked like a ghost, like he was just pure white. He was, he was well gone, he was cold to the touch. It's not an old man thing no more. It's the young girls and the young boys, man. It was the parents only kid. How do you tell a parent that their 17 year old kid died simply because like he couldn't stop using drugs? The disease don't have no freaking color don't care who you are, where you live at, if you pick it up, it's gonna kill you. There's nothing worse than telling somebody that their child died. It's the most god-awful part of this job. I am Native American, I'm Seneca. Um, growing up on the, the reservation is, is, it's a bit different. There's a lot of poverty on the reservation. There's a lot of addiction. And growing up, that's really all I ever seen. I had a man in my life who I, who I thought was my father, my dad. His ways of disciplining, you know, were uh, were a little extreme. I had to be about four or five, and I must have did something wrong. And I ran to my mother's side. I was next to the washer and dryer in the hall, so it's a tight space. And I can remember being kicked and punched against the wall. And, and I remember him stepping on my chest and I couldn't breathe. And I remember asking my mom for help and she froze. She didn't, she didn't do nothing. So for a long time, I carried that with me, you know? And all this time I'm thinking like, this is the way of life, you know? It made my disease feel at home. I was born and raised in South Carolina, small town. It was 13 of us, you know what I'm saying? Had one parents, but had a stepfather who was very abusive. Being that, I had to learn how to fight and I had to learn how to protect myself. I had the, I'm better than you attitude. Wherever trouble was, I was dead and be in the front row of it. I was sneaking and hiding because my mother couldn't control all of us, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, mama, I go to church with you. And right out the church, down the street, call the boys up and let's go sell some drugs. Uh, prison don't start until they close them doors and turn them lights off at night. That's when you see the pain. I also got into the prison gang stuff and I ended up being in the hospital for six months. Cause I got stabbed up over 20 something times. I started leaving the house when I was 14, 15. Started hanging out with friends and you know, when I drank, I felt a part of something. It would tell me to go use and get drunk to forget it. And ultimately I was trying to escape, escape the physical pain and the emotional torture. So, you know, then I got out. I started to do the right thing until I had a hip replacement. And I slipped up and I got hooked on opioids and was introduced to my old drug, which is PCP. And then I got hooked on crack cocaine. And when it happened, it was just like I started when I was 13 years old. I couldn't stop. The disease will not let me stop. Unfortunately, you know, we can keep coming here in Narcan, provided we can get here fast enough, you know, but ultimately they have to take a step. And then I realized that this is not what I'm supposed to do. That's where the journey starts, on the good side. Right now, I am a patient at Horizon Village in Sanborn, New York. This is a long-term substance use treatment facility. Horizon Village helped me start a new life. And I'm saying that from the bottom of my heart. And I knew I had to stop being 
selfish. It's one day at a time. I always felt like I couldn't help my mother. If I get stronger, I'll be able to do a lot more things. I'll be able to protect you know, the people I care about. But, but helping others get to where they want to go and, and achieve their goal, for me, is, is, is uh, fulfilling. Yeah, I have uh, dreams, dreams and ambitions to be a personal trainer. Um, I'd like to get certified as soon as possible, you know, as soon as I'm ready. And right now, I feel like I'm in the best place mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually that I can be today, that I have ever been. And from here on out, when you hear my name, it's all about doing good. It ain't gonna be about taking a story in the rehab, taking a story in jail. You know, it's gonna be Perry Calhoun helping kids, or Perry Calhoun working with people to, to do things for kids, you know what I'm saying? And that's where it got to be. Because if it's not like that, I'm not telling no more stories.